All right, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at building a rather large vending booth. And this is a pretty popular design. We've built this booth many a times. Uh, this particular booth is gonna get some custom touches, um, which we certainly always do when we're building these vending booths. Um, this particular lady is, is selling cinnamon rolls. And uh, so she's gonna have a really big display when we get all done here. So we're gonna break it all down for you. And I think you'll really enjoy this one. Seeing how it all goes together, it's really, really simple build. Doesn't cost a lot of money to build it, but the perceived value is definitely up there. So there's a good profit margin for you here. Um, and it's something that you can start and stop in a day, like literally a few hours time, and you're gonna knock this out, no problem, because all the cuts are super easy. It goes together super fast. So, um, so I'm gonna show you how it all uh, comes together here. So first of all, first things first, we have our fence picket material. We have 14 pieces that are 42 inches long. And you're gonna have quite a bit of cutoff because obviously our, four, our fence pickets are um, uh, 72 inches long. So from these cutoffs, we're gonna be making these, which are 23 inches long. There's 21 of these required total, okay? So I have lots of scrap uh, pieces so, so we, we've got 14, so 14 of these could be made from the cutoff of that, and then you'll have a few extras that you'll need to make. So 21 23 inch pieces, 14 42 inch pieces, we have 10 pieces that are 35 inches, and then we have six pieces that are 31 and a half. Now for this particular display, we're gonna need six more of these, uh, but for our standard setup, which we're gonna cover kind of first before we tackle all the modifications, uh, would only require six of these, okay? And uh, now the rest of this, uh, we're gonna have to do some more milling to this. Um, normally, I would cut all these parts, but this one stack, I would cut all the rest of the parts out of two by fours. I'm not sure why I tried. I decided to do some of it in two by sixes, to be honest. But most of it would require two by fours. So here, are these first two pieces, just pretend this is a two by four. Two by four, 35 inches. Two pieces that are 29 inches. Three pieces that are 11 inches. And then even though you only see one here, just pretend there's another one and pretend it's a two by four. And so we need two pieces that are 20 inches long. Now these really do have to be made out of two by sixes. Um, and we have six of those and they're 15 inches long. And then here we have two pieces that are 31 and a half inches long. And then we have two pieces that are 12 and a half inches long. Okay. Now what we're going to do on our make believe two by fours right here that are 35 inches, we need to rip those to an inch and a half wide, inch and a half wide. Okay, and the same thing here. This is gonna be ripped inch and a half wide. These are 29, our 11s, inch and a half wide, inch and a half wide. So we're gonna get two out of one, obviously. Um, so we'll wind up with six pieces that are 11. And then uh, these 20 inch pieces, uh, again, rip them down to inch and a half wide, inch and a half wide. We need four of those total. Um, now these two by sixes that are 15, these are gonna be different. These were ripping to two and a half inches wide. Okay, so so you'll get you'll still get two out of one. Uh, so we need twelve total. But and then these here, same di same deal. Rip them down to inch and a half wide, inch and a half wide. Now some of these boards will need some additional milling. We're gonna put some miters and things like that on there. But I'll kind of cover that when we get a little bit closer. Uh, to needing to mill those, okay? So here's what I'm gonna recommend we do. For the first thing we're gonna do is put together some panels. So these 35 inch pieces uh, is what's gonna make up our tops. And so we're gonna, uh, one, one, our center section is gonna require four panels. And then the two outside sections will require three. And those will have a lower shelf and, and uh, so there's, there's a left side and a right side. And so, uh, so we'll use three boards to make 
the top for the left and right. And then we're gonna use three boards to make the bottom shelf for the left and right. So that's where these six pieces come into play, okay? Um, now, there is some additional milling that we have to do here. We have to take one of these boards and rip it down to four inches. And then, actually three of them, I'm sorry. We need three of these ripped down to four inches wide. And then we need two boards that we are gonna rip to two and a half inches wide. Okay, so we'll need two of those. And those, those will be some trim boards for us. So that's usually where I, where I would start, is making all, the, making all the tops. Now the roof panels are gonna take seven of these. And we need to make three roof panels. So that's why we have 21 pieces. Um, so that's kind of where we're gonna start uh, in building this thing, okay? So I'm gonna clear off my workbench and we'll probably start here with the countertops, show you how all those go together really quick and easy and just kind of continue on from there. Okay, so we've got our four pieces that are two and a half inches wide and our three pieces of fence picket uh, that are four inches wide. So these of course are the 42 inch lengths. And then we milled all of this down. You can see this is now two and a half inches wide, inch and a half wide boards. So let's start here. On the 12 and a half, they'll get a 45 degree miter. You see there what we did there, kind of bevel the ends there on both sides. Now our, our 31 and three quarter inch pieces get nothing. They're, they're square cut. Our 15 inch pieces, two and a half inches wide, we got those ripped down, but then we also added the 45 just on one end. And then uh, our 11 inch pieces, square cut, we don't do anything with those. Our 20 inch pieces, we have four of those now. Uh, again, inch and a half wide, and we did a little 45 on both sides. So our 29s, inch and a half wide now, but they have a 30 degree miter on the end there, okay? As well as our 35 inch pieces, inch and a half wide, one end has the 30 degree miter. So there you go. That's where we're at now. Now we could either start by assembling our panels, we could start by assembling all of these things. And I think maybe I will start here because I feel like we could knock this out quicker than we could knock all that out. So maybe we will just start over here and knock this all out real quick. So I will clear off my workbench here and show you how all this goes together. Now I would recommend going through and, and I probably will do this, a uh, sand everything. So we'll take care of all the sharp corners and give everything a nice rounding over. We've got a little bit of smuts there on our fence pickets we're gonna get rid of get all that sanded off and uh, and we'll be ready to, to begin assembly all right so what we did is we took our first assembly here which is our 12 and a half pieces 12 and a half inch pieces and our 31 and three quarter inch pieces we came in two inches so I just grabbed my carpenter square here measured over two inches drew me a line and then we go ahead and put those two on and then obviously we got to do the same thing on that side so those are going to be our two outside legs for our outside our left and right side extension tables if you will so we need two of those and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move on to our roof supports now previously when I was talking to you about our roof support pieces I made a couple of mistakes not looking at the plans. It's not a huge concern, but we do have to make some adjustments. So remember I said we had four 29 inch pieces and we had four 35 inch pieces. Well, we do need the 29 inch pieces. So those are not gonna change, but we do need to modify two of our 35 inch pieces to be 34 inch pieces. So, and then these here, of course, our 20 inch pieces, and I said we needed four of them, and actually we have to make an adjustment to two of them. So luckily we just have to make them shorter. Our two outside tables 
are only 16 and a half inches, whereas our center table is 22 inches deep. So that's why we made it 20 inches. So we're coming in one inch. So for the other side tables being only 16 and a half inches deep, then these have to be cut down to 14 and a half. We'll still want to do the 45 degree little chip miter here, but these, these will become 14 and a half, okay? And then of course, because we're changing that, then these spacers that go in between, these will have to be cut down to seven and a half from 11, all right? So I will recover all of that when I show you the finished assemblies, just so you have a clear understanding of what in the world is going on here. So a couple little changes there, but not a big deal. We'll get this knocked out and I'll show you what those assemblies look like when I get them all together. Okay, so we have to add a couple of additional boards to our upright legs. Now we do have to make a right and a left. So as we're looking at the front of our booth, this will be our right side leg, as you can see here. So what we want to do is we want to be mindful of how these pieces go on. So you can see that that miter, so these pieces are 15 inch pieces, and then we have that miter, which has to face down. And so on the back side here, they're gonna overhang exactly four inches. So you can see I have my four inch mark there and it lines up with this board here. And then we have one three and a half inch screw that's gonna go in here, here and here. And this is four inches. So from the bottom, we're gonna come up four and from the bottom to the bottom of this is 18 and five eighths, okay? And that'll give us equal spacing when we get our shelves put into place. So again, we need right and left hand sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the left hand side version of this now. So you can see what I was talking about, right and left hand sides, right? So same, same measurements and everything, just one's left, one's right. You just wanna make sure that's how you got that set up. Our next step is to take two of our 20 inch pieces that have this little miter on them and we're going to measure in two inches on both sides and then we're going to take our 3 8 inch drill um, in this case i'm using my drill bit that i would use for a pocket hole because i like the drill bit it's super sharp and it happens to be 3 8 of an inch so we want to drill 3 8 inch holes but we're going to be using 5 16 inch bolts and the reason that i have taped them together like this and i want to drill as one is because I would like to for we're going to make the um, roof supports for the center section and uh, by doing it this way we ensure that the right or the left will fit universally when we put it on the top because the holes will be absolutely identical on the other roof supports it's really not that critical um, but uh, we're gonna do a similar thing. But, um, but at any rate, I just think it's gonna be easier if we do it this way, then both the left and the right will be the same. So here is uh, one of our center section roof uprights. Now, I did kind of venture away from the plans and I, I kind of wish I wouldn't have. Um, I came in from the front edge four inches. And so that made the space here in the middle nine. And I really needed it to be 11. And I'll talk about that later in the build, why that might be. Um, it may actually work out okay. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out when we get there. But there is one other thing I want to talk about is so from this point down is three inches. Okay. So I marked that and, and it put a three and a half inch screw going in this way. And then I just take my carpenter square and I, I rather than set a dimension here, I just make sure that it's square. Okay. So that that's on the back side. Um, now this board here, let me talk to you about this. 
We're going to explain this in more detail later in the build, but this doesn't have to be at three inches. In fact, you may want to move this down farther. Uh, and I'll explain why you may choose to do that when we get a little bit closer to finishing the build. But just kind of put that in the back of your mind that this dimension doesn't have to be anything specifically. And in fact, you may want to move it down a couple inches, maybe two, three inches. And, and I'll, like I said, it'll be easier for me to explain it later, but just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So if, if, uh, if you want to, you could come in with our hole at inch and a half and only come back three inches, okay, uh, on both sides. And then that would leave you 11 in the middle. I already cut those pieces down to nine, otherwise I wouldn't have bothered with it, but that's okay. We, we, can, leave it, we can leave it like that. So there is my second roof bracket for the center section. So now what we want to do is we want to build the two roof brackets for the outside left and right roof supports. We're going to do it much the same way that we did this one, but this one we used a 29 inch piece and a 35 inch piece. And what we need to do is take our last two remaining 35 inch pieces and cut those down to 34. Otherwise, the rest is the same. We'll come down three just like we did there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, um, and then we're going to come in two. So we're going to come in two on these for our uprights instead of four. And then for our, for our uh, bolt location, obviously, if we're going to come in two, then we'll just come in one for the bolt location. Okay. So a little bit different, but basically it's going to look very, very similar. So we have to make two of these assemblies, which are the left and right side roof supports. And earlier at the very beginning, uh, I told you these had to be 20 inches. We needed four pieces of 20 inches. But actuality, this piece is 14 and a half inches. Then we came back two inches. And then I actually came back an inch and a quarter uh, to drill my 3 8 hole. So I have a 3 8 hole going through. See it there. So come in two inches. Again, that upright is 34 inches with a 30 degree miter on that end. And then I came down three inches with my horizontal piece. And then I used my carpenter square. So this is three inches. Then I just used my carpenter square to mark this side to make sure it was square and ran a three and a half inch screw from both directions. So you can see here I have two of those assemblies now of the, of the shorter assembly. All right, and these should be universal because I drilled these bottom uh, cleats together. So uh, you should be able to use this on the right hand side or the left hand side universally. So that's, that's, uh, that's the deal there. All right, so now that we've got all that taken care of, really our next step is to begin uh, assembly of our panels, all of our panels. So we're gonna build the center section bar first, put that together. Uh, so I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So here is our front uh, bar assembly. And what we have here is a four inch wide piece that's 42 inches long in the middle. And then we have two full size, five and a half inch wide pickets on either side, 42 inches long. Then we have some two and a half inch cleats that I made out of some scrap fence picket. One at the top, one at the bottom, and then one measured from here to the top of here at 18 inches. And this is where our shelf is gonna go. So now what we're gonna do is I've got it all held together with some one inch staples for right now. I'm using my Ryobi narrow crown stapler, but now I'm gonna go back in and put some one inch uh, deck screws where all my staples are. So two per board, just to kind of permanently hold all this together. Okay, you can see we've now added our one inch screws. These are the one inch screws we're using. They have a T25 head. Now I've not found these 
at Home Depot or Lowe's, but I do have a Menards close to me, and they do have them at Menards. So that's what we're using to put these together. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our two side panels for our center bar section here. Our side panels are very much like our front panel, except they're just two full uh, fence picket width. So they're both five and a half inches, five and a half inches. And just like before, a couple of screws per board. And from here to here is 18, but we need to make two of these. So we'll, I'll go ahead and make the other one and then we'll put all three together. Okay, so now you can see how we have our panels. I've got my, my uh, right hand side here and then the center panel itself. And then we use these three inch strap hinges, which I get at the Home Depot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on right here and up top. And then this will be able to hinge. And then we'll go ahead and do this side as well. So there we go, we have our center bar on hinges now. So now what we're gonna do is get it set up. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is build the shelf. And then we have to put all our trim boards on the bar. So let's go ahead and get our shelf built. And we'll show you how we do that. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out the width of our shelf. And what we wanna do is we wanna measure from this side to this side, okay? right where our shelf is gonna lay on these little cleats. But a little uh, tip that I found online was to measure from here over a certain distance. You could do four inches, six inches, eight inches. In this case, I made a mark at 10. And then I went from this side over to my mark, and then I know exactly how wide it is overall. So I just measure from here to my mark and add 10 to that result, which in my case, it was 18 and an eighth uh, plus 10. So that would make it 28 and an eighth. So that's how wide we will make our shelf brackets here. Okay, so I will go ahead and do that real quick and we'll get it fitted in. So on these cleats that we're adding, I'm not physically measuring with a tape measure. So I just put the cleat there and mark it with a pencil and then cut it so this is this is our shelf so i've done the three sides we're gonna do one more and then we'll put a little board in between and i'm just using some scrap boards so these boards for the, for this unit here this is 42 inches tall right but the pet fence pick is 72 inches so we have lots of scrap so that's where i use you know all these pieces and it's ripping down to two and a half inches wide and then we make these cleats out of them. So we want this little piece here in roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be exact. But what I like to do is I like to push it over to one side, measure this distance that's left with the tape measure, and then divide that by two. So, you know, let's say it was eight inches. And then that's how you would find center. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So there is our shelf. Got it all screwed together and that's ready to be put in place. Okay, so our next step is to put on our little trim boards. So the, the front trim boards are four inches wide and the side trim boards are two and a half inches wide. So on the back side here, they just go flush with our end of our panel. And on the front side here, these side pieces go flush with this front panel. So what that leaves is just a little tiny bit because this is sticking out quite a ways to be level with this front panel here. Okay, so it just leaves a little tiny bit. So when we put in our staples, we're putting our staples in on the back side because it's hollow right here. Okay, and then we put on our front board and of course it's just flushed up. So that's how it look, makes that corner, okay? So it's pretty straightforward, but that's how they go together. 
So now our center section is totally complete. It's ready to go. But now remember that when we added, remember these boards that we added on our legs? We need to add those same boards at the same location on these side panels, okay? Um, so we're gonna come up four inches from the bottom and then 18 and 5 eighths. That's what the dimension was previously. Um, and we'll go ahead and put those in place and we'll screw in from the back side. So we have a place to put our shelves on, on this side as well. So actually on this one, we have to do three. So we're doing one at four, one at 18 and five eighths, and then 30, uh, 34 and a quarter up the top to the top of this one. Cause, cause our, our, our countertop will be at 36 coming across here. So let me get it put on and it'll all make more sense. Okay, so this is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. So just to recap, we came up from the bottom to the bottom of this four inches and obviously we're flush here. And then from the bottom of this to the bottom of this, 18 and 5 eighths, and again, we're flush. And then from the bottom, we're coming up to the top, 34 and a quarter. Our top is an inch and a quarter. So that will give us a finished dimension of 36 up top. So this one, we're measuring from the top instead of from the bottom, okay? And so we're running three and a half inch screw going this way. And you can see we have one down there. Same thing here on all of them, okay? So we just hold it up on that line, drive a screw, square it up down here, drive another screw, real simple. Now, now that we have all that, you can see here we've got our lines marked but one thing I want to point out is the hinging part does not change. Okay, so having those blocks in place here is not going to affect our hinge operation. So now I just need to do the exact same thing on the other side. But of course, instead of these are pointing this way, those are going to point that way. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Okay, so we have our little support cleats on for our tabletops on both sides. So now what we want to do is add in some uh, screws to hold our trim boards on. Now we don't need to add screws to the outside trim boards or uh, the inside ones here. I guess they would consider it to be the outside because we have a screw going from the back here through the trim board into our cleats, right? We have three of them, but out front, we don't have any screws. We just have staples and the trim boards for the front. We don't have any screws. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to add a few screws here just so we have a few screws on both sides. And then on this trim board back here, we're going to add a couple of screws also just to hold that other trim board on. So I'll go ahead and get that done with some one inch screws and then our front uh, bar assembly will be totally complete. So that's kind of what it looks like at this point. It's looking good. We've got our shelf in place on the back side here. We're storing up our goods. So we are looking real good. So next up, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tackle our uh, we'll go ahead and tackle our top, which is pretty straightforward. I'll show you how we're going to do that. So in our case, we know that our top boards are 35 inches, and the reason they're 35 inches is because we can get two 35-inch boards out of one fence picket. So what I'm gonna do is measure the, the width, which in my case, it's 31 inches from the outside of this trim board to the outside of this trim board, 31 inches. 
I'm gonna add a half inch. So we're now we're at 31 and a half. And then from front to back here, we are at 13 inches from our outside edge to the front of our trim board. So I'm gonna add a half inch to that, okay? And that will determine what my cleats are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 35, subtract 31 and a half, and then we're gonna divide that by two and that will tell us how big our end cleats are gonna to be to hold our top together. So this is our top. We have a inch and three quarter cleat. So we have 35 inch, we subtracted 31 and a half that we need. So that leaves us inch and three quarter on each side. Hold those four boards together. And then this cleat is our standard two and a half inch cleat. This piece here is 12 inches. So we came in from the inside here over to 13 inches. And then this is also 13 inches. This piece is 12 inches and that holds these three boards together. And then this piece here is just our standard five and a half inch fence picket. And then we left that little space because it needs that little space in order to fit on our bar top. So now we'll go ahead and put it on there and show you what it looks like. Okay, so there's our top fitting really nice. And by having those cleats the way we have them, it can only move so far, like maybe an inch left to right and front to back. So it more or less centers itself on the bar, which is ultimately obviously what we want. So now I think what we'll do is Maybe we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and put our roof supports in and build our roof panel. So maybe that would be what we can do next. So there is our roof panel. Now this piece here is three inches, but we want to look at it from the end here. See how it has a 30 degree miter? It's real important that that, that is facing down. Notice I have some staples sticking up because I had mounted it the opposite way. So don't do what I did. But that was an easy fix. We'll come in with a cutoff wheel and knock all those down. But then we have one cleat in the center, one cleat on the end. So those are all two and a half inch cleats. And again, our roof pieces are 23 inches. So now I am gonna come back in with some one inch screws. And then we're gonna put on our roof supports on our main bar center there. So that'll be our next step. All right, so we're just giving you a little bit of details here. So we came in one inch, came in one inch using my carpenter square. I marked that. And then because we're one inch here, we're automatically gonna be one inch back here. And so what I like to do is I like to take my, once I have this first bolt in, we're using a three and a half inch, five sixteenths carriage bolt. And then we're using some fender washers and then we're using some wing nuts. And then once I have that first one tightened it in place, I like to square it up with my carpenter square and then I'll drill my back hole. Okay. And I'll repeat the exact same process on the opposite side there. So we now have our uprights in place. So that went pretty smoothly, but if we put our square, you can see our uprights are not exactly square, okay? And that's not uncommon, but we're gonna fix that really quick and really easily. So I'll show you how we're gonna tackle that because our rooftop panel is actually gonna fix that for us. But the first thing we need to do is we need to make those square. So that's kind of step number one. So let me show you what we've got going on here. So I just created what I call a little cheater bar, a little spacer. You can see here, it's just some scrap wood. The spacing in between there is 33 inches. Because remember our countertop is 35 and we came in an inch on each side, that makes that 33. And so when we put our square on here, now we're all nice and square or 
pretty close to it. It's, it's not necessarily gonna be perfect, but we're pretty darn close compared to what we were. So that will help us. So the next thing I've done is I've taken my roof panel, and I do this quite a bit, is I go ahead and flush it up on this end, and then I measure the overhang here, okay? And so I know that that overhang now is six and a half inches. So I know now that the overhang should be at three and a quarter. I need three and a quarter over here and I need three and a quarter over there. Okay. So I will go ahead and make that adjustment, make that mark. So I know exactly where those pieces should be. So these are just some random scrap pieces. I came in three and a quarter measured three and a quarter and to the inside here and put this little piece of scrap in now I do glue these and and staple them and then I just grabbed me a little piece of stock here because our uprights are inch and a half and we just want a little bit of wiggle room I don't know what is that eighth quarter inch just a little bit wider so that it goes on really easily okay same thing on this side came in three and a quarter to the inside so now we know that this will have exactly three and a quarter overhang, three and a quarter overhang. And this is gonna pin our upright, left and right. And so we know that our uprights will now stand up like they're supposed to. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put it back on our little display here. Now we have that in place and you can see these cleats on the back side here. Hold that upright, left to right, left to right. Now, earlier we talked about this being nine inches. We could definitely move this out to make this wider. And so you could put a board going across here all the way kind of like we have this little cheater here you could have a board there so you'd have a little bit of storage space okay so you don't want to move this too low too much lower i should say maybe you could get by with two or three inches because you don't want it to really be way down here so that's just something to get, just kind of keep in mind that is an option So that's that roof panel. So now we can take a look at making the tables that come out and then this will really kind of all come together pretty quickly. So here is our panel for our tabletop, for our tabletop extension that we're adding to the right and left here. So it's three boards wide and then it's a full fence picket here, full fence picket on this side, one in the middle, and these are two and a half inch cleats on the outside edge. So now we're gonna come in two inches, and then we're gonna add our hinged leg here. So I'll go ahead and add our leg, two inches in from the end here. So there you can see our leg is installed. Now I use these T hinges here, this is all they had at Home Depot. So uh, these are the little, I think they're two and a half inch T hinges. I would normally use three inch, but all they had was two and a half. So we went with those and they'll do the job. What I also do is I put in one two and a half inch screw just to hold the leg in place until I get my hinges in place. So now we'll go ahead and take that screw out. I'm just using the one inch uh, screws that I use for everything else. And so now clearly that's gonna hinge just like that. So now we can go set it on our stand and see if it all works out. So there you go, you can see we have our stand on there looking pretty good. Now what I did was I took my pocket hole drill, it's 3 8 inch in diameter, and I drilled two holes here. Okay, this board underneath is two and a half wide, so I came off of here inch and a quarter. 
and then drill the hole here and here. Now I try to get roughly in the center back there and here I have to go just a little bit off center because because uh, this board uh, has an inch and a half overlap on the front. So I just go center plus an inch basically. So so there you go. So now uh, and then I use a wing nut and a fender washer underneath. Okay. So those two are in place. So now what we need is our bottom shelf. Now these, I did not cut boards for those sh shelves yet, but I did cut boards for those. So I'll go ahead and make up a bottom shelf assembly. And then we need two bolts there and two bolts over here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get that done. On the very bottom shelf, I just put that on with four bolts, but I don't use a wing nut and a washer. I might here in our center shelf, but I don't think it's necessary on the bottom shelf. But you could if you wanted to, but I just I just don't think it's really uh, necessary, really on either one of these two shelves. I don't know that it's entirely necessary. So we'll go ahead and make our shelf for this side because we already have the boards cut for it. And then we'll take a look at putting on a roof. So this is our bottom shelf. I just wanted to show you that real quick. So we've got three pieces here. And then we have full width fence picket holding those together on both sides. Two and a half inch cleat piece here in the middle, all uh, stapled together. And then we come back in with one inch screws, get it all screwed together. Pretty simple, basic stuff. Same the way we've created all the other panels. I'll go ahead and get this installed and then we'll move on. All right, so there is our finished product. And I am sorry I lost part of the footage of putting on the two roof structures on the left and right side. But at the end of the day, it does look like a pretty nice venting station. So I hope you enjoyed this and I apologize for the lost uh, coverage. Um, but this is a project that probably you need the plans for. It's just complicated enough to have those plans in the 3D model to refer to anyhow. So uh, the link to purchase the plans is in the listing description below. Plans are just $10. Um, and you get the plan, the 3D SketchUp model. You get all of our finished pictures, all of our staging photos. Um, we give you a nice uh, a video little video clip uh, post on uh, Facebook Marketplace so you can start offering this for sale before actually building one. So I hope you enjoy this one and thanks for watching.